31. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and call his name Jesus. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for everybody here this morning. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We ask you, Lord, according to your love and kindness, that you give us ears to hear what your spirit is saying to us and that your word will go forth with understanding, that it will be clear and that it will go forth with power, Lord, and bring forth fruit in our life that we will be changed forever. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. All right. First, I want to thank Pastor for allowing me to, to preach this morning. I really appreciate that. You know, glad to see y'all here. We be missing y'all when y'all be gone. You know, so glad that y'all made it. All right. I've entitled, I'm ready? Okay. I've entitled today's message, Anchored by Favor. Anchored by Favor, the favor of God. And just because we have favor from God, it doesn't mean that we won't go through challenges, okay? Because every Christian goes through challenges. Every Christian can face some uncertainties in their life. And this is a guarantee that we will go through challenges because Jesus, he told his disciples, he said, in the world you will have tribulation, but he says, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And God's favor is with us and God wants us to get through these challenges because God is for us. And I want us to look at the life of Mary a little bit this morning, the mother of Jesus, because she even she was faced with challenges and difficulties. And the only thing that could have held Mary up in the challenges that she faced was the fact that her life was anchored by favor, anchored by God's favor. And the only thing that can hold you and I up when we go through challenges is the fact that we're anchored by God's favor. And it's not a lot that the Bible says about Mary, okay? But the things that she went through and what she did, we can apply the same principles to our lives. And therefore, our lives could be anchored by the favor of God, knowing that God is with us, knowing that God is for us, and knowing that God wants us to get through these challenges and the things that we face in this life. So, the verses that we read, they're just an account of when the angel Gabriel you know, was sent from God to tell Mary that she was going to give birth to Jesus. So Mary, she hears what the angel is saying, and he says that she is highly favored by God. Now, at first, Mary didn't understand it. You know, and then he tells her again that she has found favor with God. So number one, if our lives are to be anchored, if our lives are going to be anchored by the favor of God, number one, we need God's favor to accomplish his will for us because God has a specific will for you and your life. So number one, you need God's favor to accomplish it. Apart from God's favor, we cannot accomplish the, uh, the will that God has for us now. The good news is all believers in Christ have God's favor. And look how much God wants to give us his favor. Now we need to think about this. Ephesians chapter one, verse six. All believers in Christ have God's favor. It says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. Now like I said, look how much God wants to give us his favor. And this is because of what Christ did for us. We have God's favor, not because of what you did, because we know some of the stuff that we did. And we know that God sees it, but in Christ, he made us accepted in the beloved. In Christ, and the work that he did on the cross is the reason why God can give you his favor versus his wrath. Accepted, it says accepted in the beloved, it means with special honor, to make accepted, to be highly favored. And this is his will for our lives, and we cannot separate his favor. If we have God's favor, we can't separate the will of God. So if God has given us his favor, 
then it is a will, a desire specifically for you in your life that God wants you to accomplish. Because if God gave us his favor, then he has a will, therefore he gave us a purpose. If you are in Christ Jesus, then you have a specific purpose. John 15, five, he says, for without me, you can do nothing. And Clay prayed this this morning. So with Christ, he makes all things possible for us. The will of God for us in Christ, God makes it possible. But even though we have God's favor, sometimes life does get rough and it does get challenging. And sometimes we don't understand why. Now, when I was, when I was doing this, when I was putting this together, I began to think about Noah also. Because life got rough for Noah when God asked Noah to build the ark. But the thing that kept Noah up was that he had favor from God. Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. It says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Life got rough for Noah, like I had said. Now, Noah at this time was the only one on planet Earth that was walking with God. Now, you might think, well, how in the world can that happen? Because we know that the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But, but the fact that Noah was walking upright with God was the fact that he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And if you and I are to walk upright with God, that means that God has held you up. It is nothing that we can do in ourselves, and I'm gonna look at, we gonna look at that a little bit later, nothing that we can do in our own strength. It's nothing that Noah could have did that would, that would make God accept him. But the Bible says that God already had chosen to find, to put favor on Noah's life. And therefore, Noah had the favor, so Noah had the purpose to build the ark. And God made a covenant with Noah and said, I am going to continue my, my covenant, my agreement with you and your family. So if we have God's favor, then we know that our, our family lives are important too. So that is, we can be assured that God's grace is going to hold us up in order for us to walk right with him. Because sometimes it's like, you, I know the stuff that I done did and I know what I thought, and it's like, how could I walk up right with an all-holy God? But if we have his favor, that is, going to be, that is going to hold you up. Now, like I said before, in our walk, it can get a little challenging because our lives need to be anchored by this favor through the challenges. Like for an example, family members might start treating us a little differently. You know, when you first come to Christ, you're trying to battle old habits and things like that, that old flesh still have a pull on you, things like that. But through all of those things, it brings me to my second point, which is number two, through all of those things, we have to be submitted to God's will. Because Mary was totally submitted to the will of God. Now, after being, now what can help us to be submitted to God's will is the fact that we have to be willing that God is willing to use us. We have to be able to be honored that God is willing to use us. And why is because he don't have to use you. God does not need anybody up in this building. Amen. But the fact that he chose to use you, we should be honored by that and it should be a privilege and an honor. Mary was humbled by the fact that the angel told her, you are gonna give birth to the Lord Jesus Christ. Mary was humbled by that. And God could have used somebody else besides Mary. God didn't have to use Mary. But let me show you how uh, Mary was humbled by it. Luke chapter 1, verse 38. It says, and Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord. This is after, this is during the, this is after the conversation when the angel Gabriel was telling her, this is what's going to happen with you. And then Mary, she took it all in, she listened to it, and she humbled herself, and she said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. The angel said, Enough said. She, she, already, got, she already gave the right response. That word handmaid, it means she was a, that means a female slave. That means she was willing to do whatever God had asked of her. And that's how, that has to be our attitude. We have to be willing to do whatever God says. Now, Mary, a lot, and Mary was just like a lot of us, Mary was just living her life. She was just living a regular life. She was already engaged to Joseph, 
So in her mind, she's like, okay, we're going to be engaged. We're going to have some kids. We're just going to, you know, live and just, you know, try to serve God the best way we can and let that be that. But here comes the angel, boom, out of nowhere and tells her, you're going to give birth to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is that is like amazing. Now, and that's how we are sometimes, because when we get saved before that, we just live in our life. We just live in our life. We doing whatever we think we know how to do. And we just trying to mind our own business. And then, boom, we get saved. And then God, he redirects our will. Now, sometimes to submit to that is a struggle. Because we, we okay with some of the, we, we, you know, we find we're like, I'm going, going to heaven when you die and things like that. But the will of God sometimes can be a struggle. And the reason why is because we have a flesh and we used to just doing what we want when we want before we got saved. But one of the best ways to end that struggle is prayer. And our Lord Jesus, the Bible says that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. In other words, he is the prime example of how to live for God. How should a man or a woman or a boy and a girl be submitted to God? One of the ways that, that, that he did that to, when he overcame was prayer. Luke chapter 22, verses, verse 42. This is Jesus praying in the garden. The night that he got arrested, the night before he was supposed to go to the cross, the Bible says that he was, he was agonizing so bad that he was sweating drops of blood agonizing, going through it, going through it over and over in his mind. But he knew that was God's will for him. And we have to know what is God's will to us, will for us. Look what Jesus is saying. He says, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Jesus understood what the Father's will was and he was submitted. Now, Jesus, he didn't have a sinful nature, but we have to understand that Jesus is fully God and he was also fully man. So his human nature was coming underneath that struggle. But he was showing us how we how we discipline that human nature. Jesus didn't have a sinful nature, but a human nature. Now, you and I, we got a human nature plus a sinful nature that we have to battle, that we got to kill. And he was showing us how to beat that thing. Whenever you struggling, whenever you struggling with that sinful nature, when that thing try to rise up and try to make you try to remember how good certain things felt when you was in the world, that's when you really got to get on your knees and you have to pray. And you really have to make an, make an appointed time to pray and make time for God. So I want to encourage you to pray. Make time for God because you have to like Clay prayed this morning. I think he said something like to be real before God because God knows all your struggles anyway. He saved you. Pastor went over this last week. He saved you loving you knowing everything that you done did. So but the fact that Christ Jesus, he was raised from the dead and he tore down the wall of separation. We can come to him by faith. You confess it to God and you talk to the Lord and then you and then you kill that human nature. You defeat that sinful flesh on the inside of you. That is how we do that. Now, my third point, firstly, uh, we, we need God's favor to be anchored by favor. Secondly, have to be submitted to the will to be anchored by favor. And thirdly, sometimes we don't understand God's will for our life at first. We don't understand it at first. Now, when the angel first greeted Mary, she said in her mind, what manner of, you know, it says in the King James, it says, she says, what manner of salutation is this? In other words, what does this all mean? What did this mean that I got God's favor? What, what does this mean that I'm going I'm to be pregnant? You know, she was saying that, how can this be? I'm still a virgin. I've never even been with the man, so how can I get pregnant? And a lot of times that's with us. If you're not living for God, okay, say you, you in here, you're not living for God, you're not saved. You might say, well, how can somebody like me? Live for God, knowing what I've knowing what I've been through, knowing the things that go through my mind, knowing my desires. How could that be? And that's and that's cool to think like that because you leaning on your natural understanding. But this is what this represents, how we lean on our own natural abilities, because when it comes to living for God, we think at first that it's all on us. But God is not asking us to do anything in our own strength. He's asking us to rely on the Holy Spirit who was in us to do his will. Now, look what look what the angel told Mary. Luke chapter one, verse thirty five, when Mary had these things like, how can these things be? How can I how can I get how, how is God going to work this? What is going on? 
And the angel answered and said unto her, says the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. That is how God's will gets done through us. The impossible, the things that God asking us to do to live for him. No, you can't live for him on your own, that's true. On your own natural uh, understanding, you can't live for him. Because in our lives we wonder how God is gonna work this out. Because with our own strength, this, this is impossible. And look what, look, what, look what else the angel told Mary. Luke chapter one, verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. When Christ is in you, everything that he's asking you to do, he's going to accomplish it through you. But you just have to be submitted and allow him to work. Because this is the key. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Anything, God will not ask you to do anything that he knows that, you, that he can't do. And what can't God do? He can do all things. And that's what Paul said. He can, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He says, I learn how to go without. I learn how to have a lot. I learn, you know, life is a learning process. But with the Holy Spirit, he is in you and he accomplishes the will of God. If somebody is not saving here, this is the key. With God, nothing shall be impossible. Because when I first got saved, it's a whole lot I didn't know, a whole lot I didn't understand, a whole lot of things that I couldn't do. But you just have to be submissive to him and trust him. And with this verse right here, with God, nothing shall be impossible. The most I can say about that is you, we just going to have to just trust God. Just trust him. Just believe him. God is not a man that he should lie. He is not like us. He not going to. He, God is not a salesman. You know, he don't try to just gas you up. What he says, he means because the Bible says that he cannot lie. That's one of the few things that he can't do. He can't lie. If he said it, he going to bring it to pass. All right. My fourth and my fourth and last point. If we are going to be anchored by favor, we have to remember what God has told us through the challenges. Memorization or bringing things to your remembrance, it plays a huge part in our walk with God. Because when we live in life, sometimes we look at things and we face things that it, it for the natural mind, it, with the natural eye, and with the circumstance, that don't look like that God is coming through. It don't look like this is what God's word says because we live in a fallen world. But we have to remember, be, be by remembering what God has said or done helps us to be anchored by favor. And you got you to gotta put yourself in Mary's shoes. The people here, in here that have children, Mary had to watch her son get brutalized and crucified. That was her son. And she had to watch that. Mary, but look what Mary did. Luke chapter 2, verse 19. Now, this is before Christ's crucifixion. This is when he was still a baby. It says, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Now, this is the event that took place right after Mary had given birth. Now, this is, this is where the wise men, they came, and they, this is as soon as Mary had gave birth, and the wise men had came, and they brought these different gifts, and this gold, and this frankincense, and this myrrh, things like that, different oils and ointments, and all kind of high expensive gifts that they gave to the Lord, and they said, they told Mary and Joseph, they said, look, an angel appeared unto us, and told us where y'all are, and Mary was just sitting there probably like, like, wow, what, what, a special, what a special event this is. My son got to be extremely important for all this to happen, you know? And this was especially f important for her because of what she was about to see her son go through. And, but sometimes when it comes to keeping things in our heart, we need the right people around us to help us to remember. Because a lot of times it's a struggle to try to remember things where your mind kind of easily forgets. Second Timothy 1, 6, he says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance, that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Now, Paul and Timothy, they had a relationship. Paul had room in Timothy's life where he could have told Timothy, 
I'm putting these things in remembrance. The reason why Paul told Timothy this is because at this time, Timothy was young. He wasn't a kid, but he was extremely young and he was left to be a minister at a church. And people that were older than Timothy, they were trying to bully him and tell him, who do you think you are? You, you not old enough, you don't know nothing. And Paul had left, so they was trying to intimidate Timothy. But Paul had to tell Timothy, he said, look, he said, let me put these things into your remembrance. Let me put, let me, let me uh, remind you who you are in Christ. Let me remind you that you was called to do what God has called, what God told you to do. You was called to this. And sometimes we might have to listen to an old message or an old sermon or, or, or let somebody remind us something that God told us six months ago. Might have not have seen it come to pass yet, but somebody need to be like, hey, let me put you in remembrance. Let me, let me remind you of what you told me that God did for you this, this time ago. And then when when you hear that you kind of sober up and it's like okay I understand I get it now you know it really sobers you up and that's how we to be angered by favor and I'm coming to a close and I just want to share one last scripture uh, but I don't have this on the screen Acts chapter 1 verse 14 because like I said we're looking at the life of Mary and you know like I said it's not a lot about it's not a lot that the Bible said but this is the last account that is, is put into the Bible about Mary. This is the very last thing that it says about Mary. It says, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brother. Now the reason why I wanted to share that is because this is after Jesus Christ was crucified, resurrected, and after he ascended. So Mary, she was a true follower of Jesus Christ with all that God allowed her to go through with the mission she was anchored by the favor of God she and she didn't leave she didn't stray away and she could have but she didn't her life and her soul and her mind and her everything was anchored by the favor of God and that is how me and you have to be if we are to be true followers of Christ until the very end our lives have to be anchored by favor we have to know that it takes God's favor to accomplish the will, we have to be submitted to the will. We don't understand his will sometimes, but growth and, and fellowship, God will allow us to understand. And we also have to remember the things that God has put on our minds and our hearts so we could be anchored by favor. And that's all I have right now. So I just wanna open up the altar. If you want me to pray,